Hi guys and welcome to episode 6 of Adventures in Colour with me, Natalie Porter, and him, Christopher. Ah, see, look, six episodes and we've got it down pat. Fantastic. Um, so this is our last one. Our, our Adventure in Colour is, is coming to a close. Um, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this. I know that we've certainly enjoyed uh, producing it for you and, and showing you all these different techniques and just how many different things you can do with colour and how creative you can be with it. Um, in this, this last one today, I have prepared just some simple bits of, of leaves and flowers and stuff. So nothing that I've not showed you how to do already um, in a particular set of colours. And I'm just going to talk you through how to build that colour palette, why I've made the choices that I have, and then we're going to do lots of dusting to look at how using petal dust can further enhance, I mean you've seen this already through the weeks, but particularly today, how petal dust can further enhance the, the work that you do with colour. Um, so the first thing I want to do is just take you back to the very beginning where we were talking about colour theory, um, and of course we had our wheels. So if we swap over, thank you my dear. Um, so remember, first thing to do is to not use one based on blue, red and yellow, but to go for that magenta, yellow and cyan because that is what means that you get the super bright pink, the super bright blue, and then of course, um, your yellow. So one of the things that I was talking about at the start and have spoken of lots since then, is about taking those colors and just tweaking them a little bit so that you've got um, nicer shades that have got a bit more subtlety to them, a little bit more elegant. Um, so instead of just having, for example, a super, super bright yellow, you know, we can add just a little hint of orange, soften it up a bit and get a nice sully, sunny yellow. Um, and indeed, instead of just going through a very, very bright blue, we can add a little purple or a little green and make something slightly tealy, something slightly uh, purpley although not entirely purpley, but you know what I mean, just getting those kind of subtle variations in there. Um, so I'm hoping now that that all makes more sense given what we've done in the last few weeks. The most important thing to think about when you're building a colour palette, of course, is whether you want something that, um, that pops and is very high contrast, or if you want something that is nice and toned together um, and harmonious. Harmonious ones, are always the colours that are sitting next to each other. So for example, it could be a, sort of a reddy orange through proper orange to a golden yellow. That would give you a harmonious colour palette because they're neighbours on the wheel, so they match each other, they tone very nicely, and it's a very soft, smooth uh, sort of look. That, that's what you would use if you wanted to create an, an ombre effect. Um, so where you've got that colour transition from one to the other. So you could have, as I said, sort of that reddy orange, orange and yellow. Um, you could go for a sort of the, the blue through navy to, to purpley tones, anywhere where it's sitting next to each other. Neighbours, you know, a nice big slice of that, that colour cake there. Ah ha ha, see what I did? I did. <laughs> um, if you're after contrast, then you want to go for opposites basically. So you've got three main uh, contrasting pairs which are called complementary pairs but I prefer to describe them as, as contrasting because that's what it does, they're colours that pop next to each other. Um, so your first one always is sort of reds and pinks and greens or pink and green however you want to describe it so it's anything that is opposite here um, and like we said before you could take your bright Christmas red and your bright Christmas green, that would be the traditional pairing. But if you play with it and tweak it just a little bit so that you've got a lime green and a bright pink, you're going to get something that has still got plenty of contrast, but it's going to be a lot prettier to look at. Um, so this is a wee little example of that here, where I've got a few shades of pink, a couple of shades of green. Are you going to do the zoomy zoomy? No. Oh, I Sorry. thought you were. Um, and um, it's it's got the contrast of that sort of red and green pairing, but it's just a little bit nicer to look at. The next one is uh, purple and yellow. So that is always like in your face bright. Um, this is something that advertisers use an awful lot. So purple and yellow are colours that are quite often used by Cadbury's chocolate, for example. Um, in particular, the wrapper of a twirl is wow. purple and yellow. Um, isn't that Caramel bar. Is yellow and purple, yeah. It's, it's the other way around, yeah. Um, so it's very, very bright and jarring, that. And of course, actually, with your red and green, I should have said, 
two things you see often, Christmas and flowers. So many flowers are sort of reds and pinks and stuff, um, of course with green leaves. So that as a pair often looks sort of less bright and, and kind of in your face than the others do. Um, purple and yellow, I think Cadbury wrapper. And then the last one is um, blue and orange. But before we do blue and orange, let me show you my purple and yellow example. Um, so this one here, which I have to say I, I just broke. I have had one of those days where I have broken everything that I have touched. So if we make it through this without me breaking anything, it will be today nothing short of a miracle. A um, couple of tones of purple in there, and then in, in place of yellow, I've used gold. So gold as a metallic is, is, has a yellow root. Um, and that sitting next to the purple is really pretty and again it's not bright Cadbury purple and yellow so you get the contrast but without it being quite so jarring and in your face by having that slightly softer purple and the gold there instead of the yellow which brings me nicely to our last one um, like I said blue and orange one of my favorites actually probably just because I like blue so much um, again complementary pair opposite on the wheel so you get that brightness. But like we said, think about it in terms of, you can have your bright blue and your bright orange, or you could have a yellowy orange and a slightly more roily blue or something like that. Again, you tweak those colors, you're gonna come up with something that is more mature, more elegant. It's got a little more, um, oh, I can't think of the word. I don't know where you're going, sorry. Just, um, more sophisticated. There we go. It's gonna look like you've thought about it more. Um, a bit more sophisticated and elegant. If you've got those tweaked colours, instead of going for those sort of basic colour wheel, uh, Crayola crown sort of shades of colour. That's what I'm trying to say, I think. Um, and yeah, the, the blue and orange is one that I, I like a lot. So the example that I had from before is this little one here, where you can see a couple of shades of orange in there, a little bit of bright yellow, and then um, for a change, the navy blue. So those are our complementary pairs um, that give you the contrast. In each of those examples I've showed you, I've sort of used a combination of complementary pairs and harmonious colours, insofar as we have the contrast between the blue and the orange, but within the orange you can see I've got some yellow, some orangey yellow and some proper orange. So again, it just makes it more interesting than just having two flat colours on their own. Um, that's the pairing that I'm going to go for today, the sort of blue and orange, but I've given it a little bit of a twist. So instead of just being bright blue and bright orange, I have got some sort of sunny yellows that you can see just here, which I already know in my head that this one certainly I'm going to make more orangey looking with the petal dust, which we'll look into shortly. And then I'm pairing that with a sort of a really nice kind of baby Wedgwood blue colour and then a darker almost purplish navy blue. So once we've dusted this up we're playing on that blue and yellow contrast and then also uh, sorry blue and orange contrast and then also a little bit of that sort of yellow and purple but again we're taking colours from the one side and from the opposite side so you get that pop and contrast. Um, so when we come back just after a short break, I will show you how to mix those four colours because I think they're four really nice colours. And then I'll show you the bits that I've made. Like I said, it's nothing that um, we haven't done in our adventures so far. Um, and I will show you how to dust everything and we'll tape it together and hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to arrive at a place where we've got a very pretty little posy of flowers, but in, in unusual colours, but colours that still work together because we've been very careful and specific about how we've chosen them. So we'll see you in just a moment. I have three questions for you. Do you love all things cake? Do you want to learn from some of the world's best cake artists? Do you want to be part of our growing community of over 200,000 members? Then get yourself over to cakeflix.com. We've got some amazing deals on right now. We offer a 365 day support, plus the most amazing Q&A service. You can now view us on all the main streaming services. So what are you waiting for? Head over to cakeflix.com now and become part of the Cakeflix family. Welcome back. So 
in this part, I'm gonna show you how to mix those colors up. So we'll be using those techniques and things that we've seen over the last few weeks again. Um, I do have a bit of a confession to make. The colours for this, they are colours that I love, and in fact one of the projects in uh, my first book, All About Sugar Flowers, has got uh, a bright yellow peony on it. A bright yellow peony on it. Turns out that's quite hard to say. Um, alongside some sort of tealy blue leaves and some bright blue berries and some blue fillers and stuff. So it's using those same colours. And um, But this in particular, the idea came because uh, over the last couple of weeks, every time we've gone to do our shopping in Tesco's, which is just a supermarket here in the UK, um, they have a, a, a packet of napkins that has got a sort of pale blue background, blue leaves, and then uh, yellow lemons on it, and they're beautiful. I haven't bought them because I think Chris would have a fit if I bought more napkins, because we never use napkins. We never sort of, we never have people round to be no napkins. <laughs> um, but they're one of those things that I'll keep buying them because they're cute or they've got nice colors or it's a pattern I like or something. But anyway, I resist it, but it's kind of, it's it stayed in my head. And this is the thing, you can find inspiration for colors and for flowers and for cake designs and stuff like that everywhere, um, even whilst doing the very boring task of, of shopping uh, in Tesco's in where, um, even there you can you can find it. So that's my little confession for you. Um, if we swap, we'll mix these colours up. So those are what we're aiming for, they're the ones that I mixed earlier. I've got a lump of flour paste, um, and these, like I've said before, the, the colour mixing principles will work with any of your icings, so sugar paste, flour paste, modelling paste, um, they'll work also in royal icing and in buttercream, but you do need to remember with buttercream that you're always going to have an, a slightly yellow starting point because of the butter. Um, and I'm just going to whack a little bit of uh, petal base on me just so that I don't end up too much of a sticky mess. So if we do our pale yellow first. Now, I'm going to do it straight out of the pot this week, just so that you guys can see that too. But there's no reason why you couldn't do this using these sort of saturated blobs of colour that we've been doing in the last few weeks as well. So I have just got a minuscule amount on the end of my cocktail stick, as you can see. And we can just mix that in. And I'm hoping that the video will pick up the difference. I take those together if it's showing it. Um, the yellow on its old, own, it's quite an acidic colour. It's very bright and very, very sharp. So we want to tone that down ever so slightly. So again, if we look at our colour wheel, we want a yellow that's sitting on that orangey side of it. So I'm just going to add a teensy, teensy tiny, and I really do mean teensy, teensy tiny, smidge of orange that tiny <laughs> because as always you can add more but you can't take it away my little mantra and in fact I would hazard that we do want a little bit more but it's better to have not added enough than to have added too much and then you've ended up with orange where what you actually wanted was a yellow um, we're on the right tracks do with it a little bit more saturated so we can just pop a teeny bit of more yellow in and that is just to give us a deeper colour so a more uh, what's the word a, a brighter version of it and I think let's have a little look yes that is about where we want to be with it so this is my slightly darker yellow that I've used to make our paler one if you've got plenty of that you can repeat the process and just make it you know add less color or alternatively you can take some white take some of that darker one that you've just mixed we'll add the two together and then that is going to give us our two shades of yellow that we've used so that was fairly straightforward and I'm just going to move these right out of the way because like I said I'm having a day of breaking things so I don't even want to think about what I could do with the uh, Spilling a pot of colour. Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> let's not. Um, so now we need to do these two blues. And that is going to need both the blue um, and the purple. So blue, or indeed, as we've called it, cyan, because it is that very bright sky blue that's sort of in keeping with the, the model of the colour wheel there. Let me take a little bit more. So if we start off 
again I don't want to add too too much because we can always add more but you can't take it away so you can see straight off that's given us a really really bright blue now that does go with the yellows there's no two ways about it but I'm looking for something a little softer and a little more muted and a little bit more sort of Wedgwood bluey, you know? Um, and we're gonna get that color by adding in a little bit of purple. And again, super tiny amount because we can always add more, but we can't take it away. So I am in fact going to add just a little spot more. That's it. And that is about ballpark right. Now it's a little bit darker than I want, so I'm just going to take a little lump of my now extremely sticky blue. A bit warm again here. <laughs> Next time we'll film a series in the uh, in the winter, yeah? Yeah. You'll still complain it's too hot. Yeah, I probably will. <laughs> or I'll be complaining that I'm too cold. So I've just added some, some more white to that colour and you can see paler version, we're more or less the same as we had there. If you wanted we could do it just a little more purple just to further mute that colour slightly so that we do have a, a true sort of wedgwoody muted blue like so. And that, so it's blue with a little purple, again if we reference our colour wheel this was the blue we started with. We certainly don't want a greeny blue, so it's going to be something heading towards that purple shade somewhere in there. Um, and then finally, to do this, it's the same thing, but basically darker. So let me add in some more blue there. And then I will add in some more purple. And we're going to simply keep going that way until we've got, so you can see it's starting to go darker. So let's do just a little more. I've got some on the table. How much do you want to bet? I'm going to put my arm in that. <laughs> and we should hopefully arrive ourselves at a nice sort of navy colour. So a little tip for you here as well. If you find when you're making very dark colours, that it goes a little bit sticky, which to be fair, this is a bit sticky, but it is also quite warm in here. Um, you can add a little bit of gum text, Tylo, CMC, or gum trag to it, and that will just firm it back up. Um, and again, we can see there, perfect match to that other one. So that really was just wanting to, look at these fingers, um, to show you how sort of in real terms I go about matching colours. Now, like I said, I didn't I didn't buy those napkins because Chris would have had a fit, but I knew in my head what colours they were. And that obviously that's the skill that I've developed because um, I, I do this a lot and I think about this a lot and I'm always peering at things and taking photographs of things and I think I've freaked some people out to be honest in the past who would be in their house and I've started photographing strange things at the corner, but this is because I like the colours. Um, but that, that is how you go about figuring it out. So you, you're looking for where it sits on the wheel. Start with that base colour, the blue, and then you're just adding that little bit of purple till you hit these, these colours. Um, and it is a little bit like doing a... Um, little bit like a... a, a, a what should I say? Like a witch's brew, a bit of this, a dash of that and so on while you're trying to work it out. Um, but of course, if you wanted to, don't forget that our little book of colour which is just here, um, does a lot of that hard work for you because we've got all of those uh, colour recipes where I basically sat for days on end. In fact, let's look at the purple one, seeing as that's what we're doing at the minute. Sat for days on end uh, mixing up different blobs of colour and stuff so that we had those recipes. But but that's, that's the process. That's exactly the process I would follow if... Um, somebody had given me a bit of cloth from a bridesmaid's dress or they sent me photos from a florist or, or something like that so that you can colour match basically so those are the ones we are working with today um, we'll take another short break I'm gonna go and wash my hands and uh, we'll see you in just a moment hi I'm Natalie Porter and this is Immaculate Confections
welcome back so in this third bit um we're going to do the petal dust best bit most exciting thing ever i love them and i mean it when i say that i'm completely and totally obsessed with petal dust um if you swap us over i'll show you what we've got so i've used that paler yellow to make this rose um, so this is made exactly the same way as we did in the previous episode, in episode number five, where I made a blue one. Um, and this one I've done on a 30mm ball with the 12cm cutter, just in case you wanted to replicate it precisely. Um, I've used that slightly darker yellow to make the berries. So those you'll find in the second episode for red and pink we did berries. Um, and then I've used that dark blue to make some here as well. And what I've done, hopefully you can see all of them. <laughs> They're wibbling about a little bit, like blancmange bellies, berries. Um, the yellow ones are much smaller. Same technique, just as quick. Um, bigger ones, smaller ones. And once we've dusted those, they're going to look like two different things. And then lastly, I've used that lovely sort of medium blue, that pale wedgewoody blue, um, just to make some rose leaves, which we did in the green episode, whenever that was. Whenever that, Whenever that was. Um, it was some time ago, but I've done them in this blue. And I think it's just, like I said, you, you can do weird and wonderful. If, if you do it right, it can just be beautiful. And I'm hoping that that is what's going to happen today. So, in terms of dusts for these, I've grabbed my oranges, my blues and my purple. And I've also got the grey and white on standby in case we need it. Let me just grab some brushes as well. Uh, these ones will do. Um, first thing we need to do is find the right colours. That's what I've got these bits for. And I think that our royal blue is going to be about right to go on here with our leaves. And this is something that I will quite often do, is I know vaguely in my head I've got a pretty good idea of what I think I'm going to do and how. But if you've got a bit of flower paste or, or whatever it is you're working with left over, just roll it out and keep it. And then you've got just a little testing ground, just like that, so that you can be certain that what you're doing is going to work. Um, I think, with that in mind, that we can probably go over this darker colour with the royal blue there. I'm going to go for some of the pure purple and hopefully those two together. I really hope that shows up because it just forms this gorgeous really really intense purpley navy colour, a lovely deep colour. That's it. That's sitting next to that blue there we've got the beginnings of a, of a really nice colour mm. palette. Um, I should point out with these particular dust, these ones, they are non-edible but non-toxic. So they're totally fine to use on decorations that can be removed from your cakes, such as sugar flowers. Um, and that's within the, the UK in the EU. I think in the rest of the world they're okay. But anyway, all that information is on our website. Um, but I just thought I would mention it. So I'm going to take some of our so bright yellow now and I'll put it down over here just so I don't get it mixed in with the blue. Um, yellow is the one colour, I never use these brushes, I never use the yellow brushes for anything else because it's such a pale colour and it's such a bright colour. If there was even the tiniest bit of something else on there, um, it would quickly taint the yellow next time you go to use it and you, you just wouldn't get a colour that was quite, quite so bright. So I'm going to take some of that bright yellow and look, you can see that that is going to sit beautifully on the pale yellow there for the roses or rose I should say, not plural on this occasion, so it's a little bit of toning there and I will pop some on here as well just like that and then I think that we're going to want to add a little bit of orange because like I said I'd always had it in my head that the darker yellow that I've done the did some of those berries with was going to become orangey-fied so that if we go over with a bit of orange and you can see it's going to blend nicely with the yellow we've already got on there and we can decide how orange we want to make it we can you know we can make them very orange like on this left hand side here or less so like on that bit 
and I would probably go over and add even just the tiniest little hint of orange and in fact what I might do but I'll do this when I'm doing it is mix a little orange in with the yellow to make this very pale one let's just give a little extra definition on the rose so now you can see that gives us oops, if I pick these up so you can see them without all the mess there there we go that's now sort of our complete color palette so we've gone from having that sort of basic blue and yellow to turning it into a sort of a blue and yellow a blue and orange uh, a yellow and purple so we've got that cross wheel contrast but then also that sort of harmony thing in there because we've got sort of the orange and the yellow next to each other the blue and the darker blue and those purpley tones so it should should work so I've tidied up just a little bit and I thought we'd start with all those blues and do our lovely blue leaves and berries so we're going to take a little of the dust and just pop it on the paper and just sort of rub it in a bit with the brush and the, the best way I can describe that is so that you've got the dust in the bristles instead of on the bristles so that's going to give you plenty of control over where it goes it's nicely even nice and evenly distributed across those bristles there and it just gives you a bit more control so we'll take the brush and just nice little repetitive brush strokes from the outside towards the center so that you're building up the color on the edge there we'll do the one side and then the other side like that so you can see we've got that sort of pale a bit in the middle we could add just a weeny wee bit of the purple if we wanted to let's see how that looks works for me and that is about it so let's just do a couple more so again just with the royal blue from the outside in and of course if you prefer you can always hold it in your hands and do it whichever way you do it of course be very gentle because as I've learned the hard way and I think this is the third time I'm mentioning it uh, they do break very easily so however you go just be nice and gentle with it so that's there and then maybe just the one more for luck a little more of the blue and as you can see just nice little repetitive brush strokes so that you blend the color as you put it on so that we get that nice sort of faded effect as it comes towards the center now if you wanted on some of them to just have a slightly darker edge on it we can take a little smidgen of the navy and you can see I'm dusting it off my brush plenty because I do just want a tiny little bit and we can just do some delicate little brush strokes around the edge just to give it a little more definition on the edge there so that's how we've done the leaves for this and I've got a few more that I've done earlier that I'll, I'll show you and we'll, we'll take them together in a bit so now our next thing is the berries so let me just take a few of these to show you so we'll do the royal blue in the first instance and then with the purple I think I might go just sort of up the one side so that we've got a bit of colour variation and what I was going for with these in my head was something, something along the lines of a blueberry which is why I've made them just a little bit bigger and we'll tape these ones together into clumps rather than a branch or anything. So that's the blue there and then we'll go over a little purple. And then to give them that blueberry-ish look, we can take just a smidgen of a pale grey fresh brush and I'm just gonna dab a little on top we can over dab and soften it up slightly back with our blue brush and then you've got that sort of dusty look that you get on uh, 
well, blueberries and, and some other fruits come like that as well, don't they? Plums always look a bit dusty. Mm. So that's those, and you can see we've got a lovely, rich, intense colour on them that is going to sit beautifully with our blue leaves. So we'll take another short break and in the final part we'll do our yellows and then I'll show you how we can bring it all together to make what I'm still hoping, fingers crossed, is going to be a really pretty um, elegant little floral posy. See you in just a moment. Every house needs a strong foundation. I've teamed up with my former college tutor, Cecilia Young, to bring you over 25 years worth of knowledge and experience packed into this fantastic programme. Within these eight individually assessed modules, we've covered the fundamental building blocks required to take your cake decorating skills to the next level. That's not all. Each programme is accredited by FDQ, a leading UK organisation for the food industry. We look forward to welcoming you on the Cakeflix Master Programme. So I'm back and we're going to do our yellow rose now. So I've got my yellow dust and I'm gonna do the rose first uh, just so that I don't end up making a mess of the yellow with the orange and then it gets on the rose and so on. Um, and as you can see, I've cleaned up completely from all those, those blues. So I've got a nice big soft brush and take some yellow dust, make sure that it's nicely worked into and distributed in those bristles again. And then with the rose, I'm just going to start working on each petal from the outside coming towards the centre so that we're just darkening up those edges a little bit. So I think I was a little bit out of shot there. <laughs> Shuffle back into view properly. There we are. So you can see again just nice gentle repetitive brush strokes on the edges of the petal from the outside coming towards the inside and I always tend to do it that way around simply so that if I misfire so if I'm here and I do it too broad all I'm going to do is catch the inside of the outside of the next petal if you do it from the center towards the outside it's easy to end up with a great big splodge of color on those petals somewhere that you don't want it So I'm just going to work it into those central ones there. And of course if you wanted to we could leave it just like that and just have ourselves a very bright pure yellow rose. But I think I'm going to go around again and just take my smaller brush in just a second and just add a small little hint of orange. So if I take some of that yellow, just a little orange, and I can just blend the two together to give myself a very yellowy orange so that it's not too heavy. And again, it's just going to be just a little bit. Just going to zoom in a bit. All right. So it's just a little, just darkening up those edges. And it's not necessarily even all over, it's just sort of here and there, just so that you've got a little more interest and, and definition really. I'm just 
using my big yellow brush again just to blend it in nicely and get rid of any sort of little spare bits of orangey dust that are sitting there. And actually I think that little hint of orange there is just perfect. It just, just gives it a bit more definition really. Right, so that's our rose that I will very carefully pop down there. And then we'll turn to our berries, which we've made yellow, but remember that these, we definitely want them to come out with a more orange tone to them. So I'll start off with some yellow dust, just so that they're nice and bright. We can go for the sort of the pure orange, the bright stuff here. And this we can just dust a bit on, sort of from the bottom up. So the whole thing's not orange, but we've got that nice sort of multi-toned colouring to it. And you can do them sort of two at a two or three at a time. Like so. I've just got three left here. So we'll do that yellow first, just brighten them up. You can see I'm not being terribly precise because they're only berries. Take just a little bit of orange. Again, just those repetitive flicky motions, bottom up, so that we get that nice smooth blend of colour. So that's us done with the dusting. So I'm just going to move my dust out of the way and then we can start taping it all together. So for this, I'm, I'm using white tape and that is simply so that I can then over dust it with the appropriate color. Um, I think you can get yellowy tapes. I don't know that I've ever seen blue tape, but you could probably get it somewhere I'd have thought, but using white and over dusting works just, just as well. So I've got some tape that I have um, split to be quarter width, so it's nice and delicate. And I think let's start off with those yellow berries. I've got plenty of them here. And I just want to form these into a little branch. Oh, if I can pick them up. So I'm just going to attach my tape onto the first one, which will form the top of the branch. And then we can take a second one, hold it alongside and wrap that tape around, bring it down the stem. Because remember when you're taping stuff, you always want to have the tape at a 45 degree angle. So if it's like this, the tape will move up. If it's like that, it's going to move down. If you've got it at 90 degrees to what you're taping, then all you're going to do is roll the tape up on itself and end up with a great big lump. So it needs to be at an angle if you want it to travel. So as we come down, I'm just going to continue adding little berries in. And I do like making these branches. They're very satisfying things to make and it's quite nice because with the little berries, they're very sturdy little things. Um, I don't think even I could break a sugar berry. <laughs> so <You> I tried? don't. <laughs> I've never tried, but I don't think it's ever happened. And I've made a lot of berries over the years. So you don't have to be, for once, you don't have to be too, too careful with it. And you can see that I'm just bringing them down. Remember, they're all on wires, so you can we can change the angle. That one there has got a very long sticky out bit so I can just snip that off. And there really is not any particular pattern or, or anything that I'm adding them in here. It's just at random and at angles so that they, they look interesting and form a little branchlet of berries. So I think that will do for my first one. So let's bring that tape all the way down there. Let me just again snip that end, all that shot off somewhere. <laughs> now we'll do that next one. Yes? I thought Christopher was going to say something. No, sorry. So again, we attach it onto the first one. Berry that's going to be at the top of our little branch. Add in a second one. 
bring it down and add a couple more. You get the idea, it's really not... It's one of those things that don't overthink it, just sort of add them so they look nice and how you want them to. Definitely worth um, trimming your tape down to quarter width though, because when they're this fine, trying to do that with full width tape that's, you know, full sort of half an inch thick, um, does make it considerably more challenging and it's hard to get that nice neat little finish on them. So I think I might leave this one here and then make one more very small one. So let's do this bit again. That's it, a little bit neater. Hang on, I've got my tape folded Thank over on know. itself. No, no, the tape's just, just folded over. All right, this is not the neatest branch in the world, but never mind. This isn't about the branches, really, is it? It's about, it's about the colours. And to be honest, no one would be able to spot it in the end anyway. Right, I think I might pop two little berries in just here. Something like that. And again, just keep bringing that tape around. One more here, and then I've just got one left that I'll pop on underneath. And this is, so taping is a fiddly job, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. And then you reach the point and I do this sometimes when I'm teaching and stuff, that you just sort of start doing it because the muscle memory takes over and then I have to remind myself to sort of explain <laughs> what on earth it is that I'm doing and why. Because the more you do it, you just kind of get used to it. What's wobbling? Something's wobbling. Okay, so that's three nice little berry branches. Um, and then I've kept hold of my dust just so that we can take and that sort of yellowy orange and over dust the branches and where we've taped like that and you can see that just doing that and it just takes two seconds and it's just sort of with what I had left over it, it changes how it looks I think much for the better having those coloured branches You can see I'm not being very precise with it, but it is. But you sort of get it on the tape. And the wonderful thing about taping the, uh, dusting the tape is that because the tape is, is waxy um, and therefore a little tacky, it, it takes the colour really nicely. So that we can have a, a yellowy branch to go with our oh, yellowy berries. And you could be way neater than this, of course. But I'm just doing this for quick. Right, so that's those. Um, let's take these ones now. So for these I'm going to use just some sort of darker uh, green tape because I'm going to dust over those with the navy so the darker green is going to... Um, it just makes it a bit easier. We've got less of a, a colour change that we need to put in place there. And for these ones, we're just going to take clusters of four or five, quite sort of tight clusters like that, and I just want to tape them together quite close to the top. I don't want these to be leggy, I want them to be proper little tight clusters of berries. Just like that. What have I got? So I'll do a three and a four because of what I've got left. Just make sure that you vary the heights because that will make it look more interesting. And again, don't forget that they're all on wires, so that means that you can bend and twist and shape them whichever way you need to. There we go. And actually, I need a little bit more of that green tape. That's the last one. <laughs> that one was sharp. What did you do? <laughs> I just poked my finger, it was just a bit sharp, that was all. There 
it. So bringing that tape down all the way to the end and then for this one I'm just going to take some of that royal blue or the navy blue or the purple whatever really and again I'm just going to over dust these here just to give a bluey purpley-ish tone to those right so we've got to take our leaves into little branches so I've got to move this out of the way I've got plenty of them here and just like we did for the berries you start with the top so whichever thing um, and I've gone for a smaller one here but whatever you want at the top of the branch goes first so we'll take that one, I'll pop a little bend in the next one. Just gotta make sure that I bring the tape down to an appropriate place. That's it. And I can bring that around there to attach that. Come down a little, a little further and do one the other way. like so. Uh, I might go for one more. This is a small one. I think this is one of the medium ones. Yeah, just about there. And when you're taping branches of leaves, the most important thing to do is make sure that you leave enough space between your leaves so that you end up with a, a delicate flowing branch and they're not all sort of tightly attached to each other at the top because that wouldn't necessarily be the look that we are after and of course these are a bit more fragile than the berries so do be careful <laughs> make sure that you don't catch them with the tape so I think that will do it for my first little branch I'll just bring the tape down I'm going to do the same thing again to make a second one and I've made plenty more leaves than, than I think I'm going to need but better to have too many than too few. So again, pop a little kink in the, the stem there and wrap that tape round. Bring it down. Take the next one. Uh, yeah, I think you'll work about there. And then I might pop just one more in here. So if I take one of my slightly smaller big ones. Mm. Yeah, you can, you can go about there. Actually, I've got one more little one left. Let's use that. <laughs> That's better. Oh. And again, we'll just bring that tape down. And then the last thing that I'm just going to tape together in preparation is I just want to take a couple of these bigger leaves and with these I quite like doing them just in little pairs like that so you've got just a nice little, little leafy sprig that we can tape on and attach in various places. I've got one here and I might just do one more uh, but I will angle it oh, the other way like so and then I've got a couple that I've left loose and that's just so that we've got options because there's nothing worse than if you taped everything together and then when you're making your arrangement you're placing them on the cake whatever it is you're having to go back and peel the tape off so that you've got a couple of single leaves and again here I'm just going to grab my brush I've not necessarily even put extra dust on it it's just what, what was what was left over on it. it does make your fingers filthy doing this but it looks cool to have those there uh, those blue stems 
finishes it off nicely I think. And of course you'll notice, I'm sure somebody will ask, but I haven't dusted the back of them. Um, I tend to not take as more often than not on cakes. When you've arranged the flowers you can't see the back anyway. Um, but of course if you wanted to there's no reason not to or indeed if you were working on a design and you were going to be able to see the back then you would just, just dust that as well. So we'll bring it all together. I'm going to start off with the rose in the middle of course. So that is what I'm going to get my tape nicely attached to first. And then I think let's start building this so we can have oh, some blue leaves just here. Like that. Let's bring that tape around. I think that this would be a nice spot to pop in some of the darker blue, just about, oh, let's bend that underneath just about there. You do need to be nice and delicate and careful with this because this is, <laughs> this is the bit when stuff very easily gets broken and you can see I'm just wrapping that tape around. We can go back with another, another piece of tape later on to neaten it up if you need to, but for now it's just about making sure that everything is attached. Now, having done that, I think if I take let's put that down carefully, if I take this little branchy bit and bend him just a little bit leftwards, and again, this is the this is the fantastic thing about it all being on wires that you can bend and shape everything as you go, because then that can sit just behind there, because that gives us a nice sort of upward shape because if you've seen me doing stuff before, I do like a good old sticky up bit or droopy down bit, as I like to call them. So again, plenty of tape just so that nothing's gonna go awry or move around. I'm gonna take my branch of berries and I'm just bending it, just giving it a little wiggle, just again, so it's gonna be more, more interesting and more sort of, more dynamic that's a good word for it than if it was just dead straight. And I think this first little branch of berries can sit maybe if I bring this if I bring this leaf back there, we can pop that one There we go, that's where I want it to sit. So it's sort of, can you see it's behind, in front of this one, but behind that one. So again, just adds depth and interest to things and having everything on the same, on the same level. Um, we could take these leaves and if I bend this right back on itself like that, then it will sit underneath here, kind of coming forwards in front of our rows. Again, I'm going to take that round. I'm going to be very careful now that I don't catch a leaf or a something or a petal with the end of the tape. And did you catch something? I, I just broke something. Yeah. Right. So let me. Right. I'm just going to bend that out of the way, and we'll pretend it didn't happen. There we go. You would never know. And in fact, if I take one of my single leaves and attach it just there, then that is going to quite effectively hide the fact that I just broke that one. I told you it would be a miracle if I made it through this without breaking something. I've just been having one of those days, haven't I? You have. I wasn't expecting you not to break something, I'll be honest. That's where we're at today. Right, there we go. So now that's hiding under there, and that's absolutely fine. I think I had a smaller branch of berries, so again, let me give that a nice bend there so that that can come and sit over here somewhere. That's the right place, but I want it slightly lower down, so I just need to put the bend in slightly higher. There we go, wrap that around. 
and then I think that the final flourish here is going to be some of our dark blueberries just under there so round about here and that because they're all on those wires we can I can bend them and actually I'm going to use that second lot as well just next to it there There we go. And let's get that. It's <laughs> going to really carefully Take swoops. wind the tape around. Yeah. This is the thing, you end up moving in all sorts of, or sitting in weird and wonderful positions, all in the, the name of preserving the sugar flowers because they are fragile, as we just saw. <laughs> but it was just a leaf, it could have been much worse. That's that, and again, I'm just going to tweak these over a little. And that, I think, yeah, let that one, one more there, but I'll hold that in place now, I don't need to tape it on. That is that. So that is our, let me move this out of the way so that you can see, a nice arrangement in, in blue and yellow. So blue leaves, something different. Um, the bright yellows, you've got that high contrast there between all of those colours that we put together from our colour wheel. Um, and I hope you guys like it. I do. I, I, think, it's, I think it's neat. Um, I've wanted to do these colours for ages, ever since I saw those napkins in Tesco's. Well, there you go. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I'd love to see it if you guys make one of these, or even better, you can use the, the flowers and the techniques and stuff, but put your own colour palette together, sit with that colour wheel, have a look at it and uh, figure something out that's going to work and, and appeal for you. Um, so that's us, that's, that's the adventure over, isn't it? It is, the end of the road. Um, the end of the road with the adventures in colour. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. Chris and I certainly have. Um, and we are delighted that you guys joined us, so much so that we've got um, an exclusive special offer for you on our website. So. All of the colours and things and the little books and the colour wheel and so on that I've used throughout this series um, are our own products, they're things that I've designed and, and that we sell on our website which is um, shop.immaculateconfections.co.uk forward slash shop um, and for 48 hours we're just going to have a flash sale on the colours so all of the colours and the colour book um, you can get them for 10% off if you use the code lovecolor10 so if you go on the website, add them to your basket, go to the checkout Pop Love Colour 10 into the uh, coupon code, there's a box for it, um, and those will be 10% off you. And that's only for 48 hours, so that's this goes out on Monday, so yeah. that is just until uh, Wednesday, which is the 29th of July. So if you fancy having a go with some of the colours, um, or you would like to get yourself a little book of colour, um, then now's your chance. So yeah, that's us. So that's our, our parting gift to you for uh, having stuck with us and come on this particular colourful adventure. So, well, that's it, I guess. So it's not, what do they say? It's not goodbye, it's so long, something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, anyhow, we will see you again for sure. We hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching and uh, take care of yourselves.